debutantes and welcome to day two of handmade holidays. What we're going to make today is this happy fall y'all bunting. I'm sorry about the light. It's in a hallway. It's kind of dark, but I'll kind of show you. Um, it's just pretty much a burlap bunting with stenciled letters and leaves held together with twine. Um, the one we're making today is a little bit different assembly than the grommets and the twine tied to it. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is to make a triangle pattern to make the bunting. This is the one that I've already completed. I'm going to show you how I got to this point. I knew I wanted the finished triangle at the top to be six inches across. So what I did was I measured with a ruler six inches just like that. Then I found the middle, of course, which is three inches, put a little mark, and then I just went down from that center mark another six inches. So just draw that line down to six inches just like that. I don't know if you can see this pencil. Let me grab a marker. Let's see if you can see this a little bit better. So here's my center mark from the three down to six and then of course the six inches at the top of course this is sloppy because this isn't going to be my actual pattern I'm just showing you how to make it so now you basically have a T now to make the triangle all you want to do is now match up this point with this point and draw that now you're going to do that on both sides obviously now with the new, the way we're doing the new bunting, we're actually going to have this folded down, and I'm going to build a, make a casing to put the twine through. So I wanted another inch to fold down. So I went ahead and measured up one inch from that measurement, and then I just connected those so it would be a nice straight line. And then you're just going to connect the sides of the triangle. It's not that difficult and it doesn't have to be that nice and neat and clean. It just, it is what it is. It's just your pattern to cut out the triangles. Okay, so now you have your pattern and you're going to want to cut this out so that you can then use it to cut out all of the triangles. So here's the pattern that I use. I actually scored that top line so it would fold down nice and neat and I could use it as a guide and of course these little tabs will be cut off later so now we have our pattern so let's get it drawn out on the burlap and cut out so for this step we have to draw our pattern onto the burlap and what I did was I just um, drew a row seven inches and another one seven inches because from this point to the top is seven inches and now I'm just drawing out my pattern, kind of like little teeth, and I need 16 of these for the Happy Fall Y'all banner. So I'm just kind of tracing it, not making the line too dark, just in case you see through it. So I do one this way, and then I'm just gonna take the pattern and flip it like this, and continue drawing them out until I have 16 ready to be cut out. And remember, we're not looking for perfection here. This is burlap. Okay. okay, so now I'm just cutting right straight across the straight lines. I've already cut one side. I'm just cutting the middle. And then after we cut this, then obviously we will then go down and cut out each individual triangle but because we stack them like this it'll be less cutting which is good when you're cutting burlap because it hurts your hands okay so you can see that we've cut out our stack of burlap there's 16 plus this one and you can see this is not a uh, clean project you're going to have burlap dust so just be prepared now the next step is I'm going to take the pattern that we prepared earlier and I have made this fold one inch down and all I'm going to do is put it on one of the pieces and I'm just going to follow that fold and bend this over slide this out and I'm going to just put a pin and I'm going to be sewing this as a channel 
for the twine for the bunting. So that's one. I'm going to do it to all of these. And what I did was I made sure that the black ink is on the wrong side. So that. And then, of course, once we sew this, we're going to cut these off. But I will show you that in the next step. All right, so I'm at the sewing machine, and right now I'm just going to kind of finger press this down. Remember, this is not perfection we're looking for. This is just some nice primitive thing. So I am going to now sew not super close to the end because, you know, this frays maybe in, what is that, like an eighth of an inch, a little bit more right there. And that's where my line is. And I'm using white thread because I don't feel like changing it to brown thread. So I'm going to start in right on the edge, start sewing, and then I always back stitch to lock that stitch, and then just sew a nice straight line. Easy sneezy. Pull that pin out. And when I get to the end, I'm just going to back stitch that again, and we have one completed. Okay, now I realize some people don't like to sew, so you can also glue this. Same process, put this here, fold it down, but don't glue it until you lay the, the twine into that channel because I don't think you'll be able to get it through with the glue. I think it'll be much more difficult. So make sure, this is the very first one, make sure you leave enough end here so you have something to tie with. Then you're going to put it right there where your fold is. See where this fold? You're going to kind of put it, lay it down in that channel. And then you'll take your hot glue gun and just run glue across here and then be very careful and just fold it down and press it and then of course you have to trim those little ends off don't cut your twine the only problem with doing it this way is you're going to really have to get your spacing correct on your letters so that's how you would do it if you wanted to glue it okay just want to be completely honest here after the first couple that I folded using the pattern and pinned um, I decided that I was going to now eyeball an inch and use my iron instead of pins to make sure that they stayed. I have a pile here that I've already ironed. I'm ironing these down about an inch because like I said, you know, this is handmade, not perfection. And this is a whole lot easier using a very hot iron. Um, be careful. You can iron burlap, but just be very careful. And so that, I just want to be completely honest on how I'm going about putting this bunting together is I'm not pinning, I'm ironing because I hate to pin. Okay, so I have stitched all of the little bunting banners. They're all stitched together. I will be trimming this and cutting it. But I did notice as I was sewing, some of the pieces have already started to fray just a little bit, which that's the nature of burlap. I kind of anticipated that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this foam brush right here, dip it into a little little tiny bit of glue, and then I'm just going to kind of tack it on this where the stitch line is, and that will seal that Velcro from fraying. So that's my next step. I'm going to do it on all of the bunting pieces just to make sure that I don't go through all this work and then it falls apart. And I certainly would not want it to fall apart on you if you were doing this project. My mother always laughs and says when she tries to do a Pinterest project, they always leave out a key step that it, you know, will equal her success. So I want to make sure you know everything that I'm doing. Um, full disclosure, so if you decide to make this craft, um, it will come out well as, as well. For the leaf shapes that I'm painting in between the letters and at the ends of y'all, I just kind of drew out a basic leaf shape. Um, I took some inspiration from that silk leaf over there and I am going to cut it out with my X-Acto knife. I do have a self-healing mat, but of course you could do this, you know, I used to use the yellow pages, a big stack of the yellow pages when I used a X-Acto knife because then I would mar my surface and I could always rip off the pages that were cut. So I'm going to cut out two stencils because I'm not sure if I'm gonna change the paint color um, and I don't really want them to mix. So that is what I'm doing now. I'm going to put my handy dandy X-Acto knife that looks like it needs a new blade to work. So I have cut my stencil out and I have laid it on one of the burlap triangles that I want to stencil the flower on. What I am using are these um, Valspar Oops, paint samples, I guess. They were a dollar when I happened to be in Lowe's one day. They're the colors that I want to use. So I'm going to use this um, 
foam brush, cheap little foam brush. I'm gonna dip it into the paint and wipe off some of the paint on some extra paper and then I'm gonna work from the outside to the center. So let's see if we can do that. Now I probably should have put this paper under my burlap, so let's do that now. Excuse the mess, let's just see if we don't want paint on all of these. Those are drying. So there I have the stencil. It's pretty much centered where I want it. I'm just gonna hold it down, get some paint on my brush, dab it off, and then like I said, we're gonna go from the outside in because if we do it that way, the paint shouldn't bleed under the stencil. So I am going to finish this up and show you what it looks like when I'm done. So I finished painting the leaf with the, the stencil and as you can tell it doesn't look like anything fabulous just yet, just kind of an orange blob. So now I'm going to take this raw umber acrylic paint, I got this on clearance, I don't know, for like 50 cents and it's raw umber, it's just really, you want a nice dark brown and we're going to put some veining into the leaf. Now again, I don't have a special brush, this is just a brush I dug out of my stash. It's just kind of a thin brush that I'm going to use the edges to paint the veins. So I'm just going to dip into the lid because to me it's just easier when I don't need a lot of paint and I'm just going to dab some of that paint off and I'm just going to go in and just kind of, you know, put veins where I think veins should go. I'm not a professional painter. I'm just going to give it a little bit of detail and the um, orange paint is still a little damp so that'll help it to blend and look a little bit more natural. And I'm just gonna carry this brown right up into the leaf and give it some texture. Maybe put a few little side veins to make it look like a leaf. Now, of course, you know, I'm a Floridian painting fall leaves. I've seen fall leaves maybe once or twice in my lifetime. So that's a good basis to get started. And now I'm going to do, I think, two more of these to fill in on the banner. So now it is time to stencil the letters onto the burlap. I'm using these stencils. Um, I purchased these, I believe I purchased these at Michael's more in the art department, not really the home deck stencils. These are more of like the architectural type of stencils. I think they were like $5.99. Um, but of course I used my 40% off coupon and you can tell they've gotten some use. So these are the stencils I'm using. Now you can use any stencil you want. You could, if you have beautiful handwriting, you can just do this. I have to use a stencil because yeah, I'm not gonna do all that great. So basically the same exact process as we did with the leaves. We're gonna take our brush and from the outside in, we're gonna go ahead and paint that, of course holding the stencil and the burlap so the stencil doesn't slide all over the place. I am going to use some more of my Valspar um, oops, $1 paint for this. So I'm going to go ahead and stencil out Happy Fall, y'all. And when I have all the letters painted, I will show you what they look like. I went ahead and stenciled the A using the stencil, obviously. And you see these little open parts from where the, the stencil didn't connect. I just took the stencil off, now I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to carefully fill in those little blank spots so it doesn't look like I used a stencil. So I'm just going to fill that in. Now of course, if you feel like there's not enough paint on your stencil, you can go ahead and fill in anywhere, you know, just pretty much stay in the lines. Remember we're not looking for perfection, this is handmade and we want it to look rustic. So I am going to continue with the rest of the letters, but I wanted to show you how I am connecting the stencil after I'm finished. I finished painting all of the letters and now it is time to go ahead and string them on the twine. So what I have done is I have got a little safety pin, I guess it's like a medium sized safety pin, and I have just attached it to the twine which is still attached to the spool. So I'm going to start with the first letter and I am just going to guide that right into there. So there's the safety pin and you're just gonna kinda push it along. Be careful when you pull this end that you don't shred it up. So you just keep pushing that in and it'll it'll go, just a matter. And this is how you're gonna string all the letters 
onto the twine in the order that you want them to go. So mine says happy and then has a leaf in the middle and then fall and then the y'all is on another string and it has a leaf on either end. So I'm gonna finish stringing these and then I will show you the finished product. So here is the finished banner. I had to put it on the floor in order for you to be able to see the whole thing. Um, it came out really well. I made this for my daughter Maureen over at Glitter and Groceries. She had seen mine and said, hey mom, if you ever wanna make me something, I'll take that. So I thought since I was going to do a video about this anyway, I would give it to her as a gift. So hopefully we'll get to see it on her Instagram account at Glitter and Groceries. One more truth in advertising statement. The first color I stenciled, the Happy Fall, y'all, did not show up. It When it dried, it was too close to the burlap, so I had to go back over it with a white, just regular acrylic craft paint. So here is the completed banner. Well, that's our second project finished for the series of Handmade Holidays. I decided to go with the fall crafts for the first week of November because I wanted people to be able to make some nice things for Thanksgiving. U.S. obviously, Canada has already um, celebrated their Thanksgiving holiday. Um, I am itching to get into my Christmas decor and kind of purge that a little bit. But I hope you're enjoying this series. If you have not subscribed, please do. Please comment. Please thumbs up this video in this series if you're enjoying it. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!